Hi guys, it's Carrie from KDS Insurance Services. How are you doing today? I uh, wanted to post my second <clears throat> weekly video today and I posted one earlier today, but that's a, sort of a little bit different. That's um, the introduction of uh, Transamerica as my new partner on the life insurance and retirement uh, vehicles. But what I wanted to talk to you today about, it's, it's a little bit on the same subject, but not quite. So we all know that when we buy a house, <clears throat> we have a mortgage generally, right? Because not everybody can just pay cash for a house. So we have a mortgage and there is a product on the market called mortgage insurance. Okay. It is a policy that you buy. It's generally you buy it from the bank. This is not mortgage insurance that your finance company requires that you have on your loan. That's a completely different thing. And that um, was put into effect when the uh, bank, <clears throat> the Frank Todd Banking Act went into effect um, with President Obama. This is different, okay? That, that protects the mortgage itself and you have to pay for that in your mortgage. Um, and that doesn't protect you, that protects the finance company, the mortgage company. And it's required that you pay it to ensure that if you default on the loan, that the mortgage company is going to get their money. It has no protection for you whatsoever. So I wanted to clarify that. I've had some questions on that already. And so that is what is called mortgage insurance and it is charged on top of your principal, your interest, your insurance, um, your insurance policy and your taxes. It's up over and above all of those things. And it is there to ensure that if you default on your mortgage, <clears throat> that bank close, forecloses on you, this insurance policy pays the bank, it does not pay you. Very important distinction there. But there is also another product on the market called mortgage insurance that you buy to protect you. <clears throat> and how that works is generally you buy it from a bank, it's called mortgage insurance and the bank controls it. So if you, um, are killed, die, and, and you can't pay off your mortgage, this policy then will kick in, the bank controls it, and the, the bank then is required to pay off your mortgage. <clears throat> so you're asking, well, what's the difference between that and regular life insurance? Well, the biggest difference between it, guys, is that you control that money, the bank doesn't. And I don't know about you, but I'm kind of leery when it comes to the <laughs> banks and them controlling my money. It's my money, right? So if I have a policy, a life insurance policy, and I, am, and I die, I know that those life insurance proceeds, based upon what I leave as my directive in my will, will pay off that mortgage. So if I have, $100,000 life insurance policy and my will says take 60,000 of it and pay off the remainder of my mortgage, then I've left a directive for my family to take that money and pay off that mortgage. I'm in control of that money. I am in control. I'm the owner and my beneficiaries get the, the funds. My directive in my will then says to my spouse or whoever your, your executor is, please take X amount of these proceeds and pay my mortgage off. You control your money. When you have mortgage insurance and that mortgage insurance is from your bank, the money goes to the bank and the bank pays off the loan. So if you ask me, and of course this is just me, these are my opinions, um, these videos are after almost 40 years in this business. And so my these are my opinions and this is what I'm presenting to you to help educate you so you know the differences between all of these different facets of what goes on in the insurance um, world. I personally would rather control my money, leave it to my, my beneficiaries, my spouse or my kids or whoever that may be, and send them a directive or leave them a directive that says, please take X amount of that money and pay off my mortgage, pay off my car, pay off my final expenses, pay for my funeral. I'm controlling that. Instead of a policy that you buy from the bank that protects the bank, right? I mean, why would you wanna do that? I wouldn't wanna do that. On top of already, if you don't have enough money down in your house, 
this other insurance that you have is called mortgage insurance that guarantees your loan. So I just, it's, this is just my opinion and I'm just trying to give you accurate information so you understand the differences, okay? Personally, if you're gonna buy insurance to protect the debt, meaning what you own on your home and you wanna pay that off, it's my opinion the best way to do that is to do that with life insurance that you own and that you control and that you designate to go to whomever is surviving you in death. That to me is more logical than buying a policy that the bank that the the bank is protected and not me. I, I just seem it just seems to me that's a logical assumption that I would personally rather spend that money on that kind of policy than to pay money to the bank um, to protect the bank. That just to me is is kind of common sense. If that doesn't make sense, and I haven't explained that correctly, please do send me a message because this is a confusing subject. So just to to recount, we have three different things here. We have a we have mortgage insurance that. The finance company makes you pay in your monthly mortgage, and that is designed to protect the loan in the event you default on that loan. The bank forecloses on you, then the finance company, the mortgage company, gets the money to pay off that loan. That's the first one. The second one is mortgage insurance that you buy from a bank that also protects your mortgage. So if you die, you've purchased a policy from a bank, the proceeds of that policy then goes to the bank to pay off that loan. That's all it does. It doesn't have any other function to, put, to pay off that loan. Or thirdly, you have a life insurance policy that you buy to protect all of your debts. You then, those proceeds then go to your beneficiary, whomever you choose as your beneficiary, and in your will, you leave a directive that says, please pay X amount of dollars to my mortgage to pay off that mortgage. Then anything left in that life insurance policy is there to pay off other things, to give to your loved ones, to pay off your car, to pay for your funeral expenses. So it can be very, very confusing. And a lot of people don't, can't get their head around this. And I get that. That's what I'm here for, to try to help you get through this. So if you have any questions, please shoot me a, a note, give me a call, contact me on Facebook, at my website, on my telephone. You can always reach me through YouTube. Um, if this hasn't been cleared and you need more specific information, please reach out to me. And remember, these videos are they're for your educational purposes. They're here to help you so you understand all of this because it can be confusing and it can be uh, very hard to distinguish what, you know, what does what and who gets paid and all that kind of stuff. That's my job. That's why I'm a licensed independent insurance agent and I'm here to help you. So uh, anyways, that's it for the week. I really hope you have a great weekend, everybody. Uh, Christmas is in full swing. Remember, if you're out there shopping, please pay attention to your surroundings. And if you're gonna go shopping, take somebody else with you just for safety reasons. There's lots of bad peoples out there in the world. And remember, fire hazards are now uh, in our first priority with Christmas trees. Don't put your Christmas tree near a fire of uh, another fire hazard. Don't leave your Christmas tree lights on overnight or when you're away from your home uh, because those are subs they are substantial fire hazards during this holiday season and we would hate for that to happen to your home to burn down from a Christmas tree. It does happen frequently, so be very, very, very careful about that. Make it a great weekend. Have fun wherever you are. Stay safe. God bless, and I will catch you next week. Have a great one, everybody. Bye-bye.